All right, guys, we're bright and early today, right? Yeah. We're on our way to go see our next guest. Yeah. I don't know if you guys heard of him. I'm kind of actually excited about this. Are you? Yeah. Like normally we do our podcast, and I'm like, okay, cool. I'm glad we got that done. But this time I'm kind of like, actually. Are you cheesing? Excited. Huh? Are you like cheesing? Cheesing? No, it's just like you know, there's actually some excitement here. Oh, I'm right. excited. Is it because of our who our guest is? Yeah, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so you guys are probably wondering who our guest is, but uh, you've heard of him, you've seen him. You've definitely seen him. Yeah, you've definitely seen him. Even if you don't know who he is, and if you've been living under a rock, or you're new to Las Vegas, uh, you for sure have seen him, but maybe you don't know who he is. Uh, but he's very big in the uh, Hispanic community. Uh, his career started with uh, the Hispanic, or helping uh, the Hispanic community with uh, legal aid, and his goal and his mission has always been to just uh, be able to provide that legal uh, knowledge and legal help Resource uh, and them. resources to them and, and helping them you know through different stages of life whether it's a car accident whether it's uh, bankruptcy whether it's even uh, immigration which is a huge topic um, so uh, I've personally known him for a few years I get to meet him for and you get to meet him for the first time even though you've seen him but um, yeah. You never actually had a conversation, but uh, so that's probably why you're excited. Very yeah, excited. Well, I mean, you know, he, he, Mr. Palacios has got a big name. And oh, you just, just said who it was. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right. So his name is Eric Palacios. I'm sure you've seen him. He's a uh, attorney here. He's been an attorney for over 20 years, and uh, his billboards are everywhere. Four 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 seven 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 cuatro 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 siete siete siete. No hables con Maria. You guys remember those uh, commercials from his. Uh, few years back and uh, he's doing a lot of things now with uh, emojis oh man yeah his billboards with the emojis are so much fun yeah they are. like that's different like you, you don't have you just your name and attorney service and they're, purpose and they're catchy you know yeah. I love it I love it yeah right. absolutely so we're on our way to go check go check out his offices um, and just kind of chat with him we're gonna learn more about his story we're gonna learn more about some financial advice that he suggests so we're gonna take it from the expert who has probably a pretty serious portfolio and uh, more importantly he's, he's a solid entrepreneur a staple and a pillar here in Las Vegas so that's where my excitement is coming from because he's done it all if you can think of it as, as a businessman he's been there and so we get to not only kind of lean, lean into him on, on uh, those experiences we're sharing uh, his advice as to what you should do if you're thinking about investing and how you should diversify so looking I, forward to it. I have the camera on the, the dashboard so we're gonna wrap this up we're gonna get over to his uh, offices and chat a little bit with him and uh, hope you hopefully you guys enjoy it and uh, you guys have some good takeaways because he's gonna have uh, some good good knowledge yes for us so anyways we're almost there well good morning and happy Friday to you this is another episode and a special episode of the Uran Ordonius 5 Diamond Group podcast and uh, my name is Jared. First of all, this is Isaac and our special guest speaker. You've seen his face on the billboards. You've probably stumbled on his commercials. But the man and the legend himself, <laughs> Mr. Eric Palacios. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for, you. <laughs> for the invite. Yeah. Super special. Uh, as we said, like we see your billboards all the time. And uh, it's really special for us to be able to be here. Um, our topic today is going to be about real estate and investing and really how can the normal average Joe be able to get into investing and build a legend of wealth and equity. Uh, but before we jump into that, let's learn a little more about you, man, because you've right. got a phenomenal story, <laughs> amazing entrepreneur. You are uh, a staple in this city and really kind of a pillar, I would say. I would argue that you would have uh, some pretty good clout amongst uh, the elite here in town. And so tell us how, you know, your story, what, what got you this I appreciate that. Uh, we are from Ecuador, my, my family's from Ecuador, and uh, when I was nine years old, uh, my uh, younger sister, uh, my parents uh, uh, found out that she uh, was deaf, uh, she couldn't hear, and uh, education for, for the deaf uh, was something that was almost non-existent in our country. Uh, so we came to Las Vegas. We, my dad already had uh, four brothers here in, in Vegas since the mid-60s. Uh, so we moved to Vegas uh, and 
found out my sister needed uh, some uh, education, special education. This is your older sister? Uh, younger sister. Younger sister. Yeah. So she was one year old at the time. Oh, so uh, we came here and uh, my parents uh, fought to uh, put her in, in uh, integrated classes uh, with uh, uh, the rest of, of the kids and not uh, separated. Uh, and uh, things went well. My sister did incredibly well, graduated uh, high school, graduated college. Uh, she's doing great. Uh, so because of, of her uh, and because of her condition is, is what brought us to Vegas and, and what kept us here. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. My niece is uh, growing chronically deaf and being able to integrate her into uh, you know, those classes have been super beneficial. So I, I totally sympathize with that experience with that. So yeah. I'm very glad to hear she's doing well. No, she's doing great. So yeah. it was uh, worth the, the sacrifice. <laughs> oh man, wow. And so uh, you started in law or you started in real estate? Uh, law is actually my, my third career. Uh, when I graduated high school, uh, I wanted to be a teacher. So I started uh, uh, at UNLV uh, towards an education degree, uh, but I was fortunate uh, to get my foot in the door with the school district. So I started working uh, in a high school first and then in a, a couple of junior highs. Uh, and it's great work, but I found out within two years that it wasn't for me. I didn't have the patience for it. I didn't have the, the aptitude to be a, a great teacher. Uh, so then uh, I, I took some time off to figure out what, what direction I wanted to go. And then uh, my second calling was real estate. So uh, I was licensed uh, early on and uh, started out with Coldwell Banker uh, and uh, had a, a great time uh, with real estate. Uh, and then uh, after about four or five years of doing real estate, uh, got the bug in my ear about uh, law school, so I decided to give that a try, mm -hmm. and uh, I've been doing that for over 20 years now. So you didn't go to law school or even start thinking about law school until you were in your 20s, early 20s. Exactly. Most people graduate law school if they go straight through uh, at uh, about 24 uh, years of age, 24, 25. Uh, I didn't start law school until I was 26. So it's never wow. too late. Uh, it's never too late. And what's awesome is uh, I went to law school with a couple of people in their 60s uh, that uh, decided to to become attorneys. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, at that. Uh, part of their life and it was great uh, just to see that it's it's never too late if you want to get something done uh, just uh, you know put your, put your head down and, and start and, and you'll get there and you gotta and you gotta love what you're doing because I mean otherwise how long have you been doing this now? Uh, over 20 years yeah, yeah no, I've got a pretty bad ADD so if I didn't love what I was doing <laughs> I'd be doing something else but uh, we, we've stuck with it for over 20 years and, and really enjoy helping out the community that's fantastic man that's a great story Thanks. You know, being able to just keep in mind that um, it's never too late to do what you want to do. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you stick to it, you can make it happen. So how long did it take you to get through law school? Uh, law school is, uh, well, let's start with undergrad. Undergrad is normally four years and you need a degree uh, to get into law school. Mm -hmm. So my undergrad, because I was uh, working, uh, it took me eight years to, to go through UNLV and, and graduate. Uh, law school is normally three years, uh, however, I did it in 20 months. Uh, there's uh, two schools in California that have accelerated programs where you can graduate in two years. Uh, and I did it a little bit faster, got all my classes out of the way, and then did my final uh, semester here as an internship. Uh, so uh, we were able to go to San Diego and come back in, in 20 months. Uh, I don't recommend doing it that fast. <laughs> it's very hard for information to, to sink in and get processed when you're going at that speed. Uh, but at the time, since I was a little bit older and already working and, and just married, uh, I wanted to get in and get out and start working right away. So we did the accelerated program and, and here we are. Man, man. So you not only uh, believe this, this philosophy of being able to do uh, your 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 vision, do your dream, uh, but you found a way to make it happen. That's it, and uh, it's it doesn't take you know I don't have any extraordinary abilities. I'm I'm just like your average Joe. Uh, to me, uh, it's all about opportunities uh, and just taking a chance and, and going for it. 
Uh, and I always tell people, time's gonna go by no matter what you're doing, whether you're watching TV or sitting on the internet or studying and learning something. Right. So use your time wisely, uh, learn. Uh, the, the best thing you can uh, do in life is, is learn, and, and not just a trade, but any type of, of education is, is important. Uh, and what's great now is university is not required as it was years ago. Now all you have to do is turn on your, your computer, turn on your phone and Google it right. and you can learn <laughs> you can it anything you want. You want. <laughs> so uh, it's so much easier now just to have information at your fingertips and to learn on your own. Yeah. So it's a great opportunity. Growth mindset, man. That's it. Excellent <laughs> philosophy in life. <laughs> if you don't know what it is, Google it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, that takes us to the next uh, topic and really the theme of today's episode is uh, how do professionals diversify in real estate? Your first career was in real estate um, and you have a bank probably portfolio, a healthy portfolio of rental properties, uh, but anybody can get started. That's what I love about uh, banks in particular, that it's a lot easier uh, than in, in our surrounding states. For instance, if you're in California to buy a property, it, it just takes uh, so much effort because of how expensive pricing it are, is. Uh, the competitiveness of, of investing, but uh, Vegas is still kind of the wild west. If you want to do it, you can do it. So uh, <laughs> you, you use the words straight out of my mouth. Right? Yeah, and, and I love that because uh, it, mostly in, in, in any type of uh, uh, business, uh, if you come to Vegas and you work hard, you're going to make it, which is something that you can't be said for for other places. Uh, so my advice is always to when I see a, a, a young person or a young couple is buy real estate. Uh, it's the best savings account. It's the best retirement plan you can have, and. Uh, my advice is also, if it's your first property, take full advantage of it. Rather than buying your little dream house or, or, or the perfect house that you think is going to be for you and, and, and your family, my advice is always buy a multi-unit uh, property. Um, fourplex. Fourplex, to, to me it's the best, but sometimes people, oh, I just want a duplex, I don't want the headache, blah, blah, blah. But if you can buy a fourplex as a first time home buyer, you are going to get in with an FHA loan, 3% down. If you get seller assistance, you're probably getting in with zero to 5,000 out of pocket for a fourplex that's unheard of. <laughs> and in Vegas, you can find one in a nice neighborhood, in good condition for, for that amount. So basically, immediately you're going to be living free. The three rentals are going to pay for your unit uh, and maybe some of your, your out-of-pocket expenses. Like you're going to be making two, three hundred dollars a month. So it's not the best place that you want to live. You don't want to be in an apartment. You don't want to be uh, maybe in that particular part of town. But it's a nice sacrifice to make for a couple of years. Then it gives you the opportunity to save some money and then buy the house that you like, uh, the neighborhood that you like, close to family, close to better schools. Uh, now the fourplex is going to pay probably at least half of your mortgage. Uh, and that's my advice to everyone is every two, three, four years, jump to another property, keep the one you have, rent it out, it'll pay for itself. Um, big fan of 15 year mortgages. Mm -hmm. um, and by the time you're 40, you can have two or three properties that are paid off. Uh, and your whole world opens up because once you're counting on three to four thousand dollars in passive income without having to do much to, to maintain it, then if you don't like your job, you can tell your boss, see it, I'm out of here, <laughs> I'm gonna go look for something I like. If you want to start a business, it, it, anything you want to do in life really kind of becomes a lot easier to make that jump because you know that no matter what happens, your house is paid for and you're gonna have some income uh, coming in. So in my opinion, it's the best base you can have. Uh, and in Vegas, it's the, the best place, if not one of the best places in, in the US to do that, uh, simply because we've always been stable uh, as far as uh, the value of, of properties. So yes, there's fluctuations, but it's nothing compared to other parts of the country where we've always been insulated because of the type of city that we are. So uh, to me, that's, that's the advice I give, and that's what I've tried to do uh, on my own, and it's helped uh, get us where we are. And I like what you said, sorry, I like what you said because you said you got to sacrifice for a couple years. Because a lot of people's mentality is, you know, I'm living in an apartment, why am I going to move into another, why am I going to buy an apartment? Mm -hmm. uh, but 
you yeah. said it. You know, you do this, you're rent free now. You know, you're paying fifteen hundred dollars in, in a rent, but now you're living for free, which now it opens up your your opportunity. You start saving that fifteen hundred dollars to be able to afford that dream home in two or three years. That's, That's it. it. You know? That's it. And uh, and yeah, a lot of people don't get it. And it, it makes me sad when I like, mm -hmm. explain to a young couple, you, you need to do this. And they're like, no, no, no. And then I'll see them a month later with an Escalade. And I'm like, you know, <laughs> what did you do? What's the status quo? What's the status quo? It's like, why would I yeah. you know, downgrade? That's what they look at it. But they're not really downgrading. It's just the, the uh, second uh, plan. The second part of financial advice I, I always give when I'm asked is never have a car payment. If you're making twelve, fourteen dollars an hour, there's no reason why you should have a forty-five thousand dollar car. Uh, we all like nice things, but uh, to me, a car payment just enslaves you. Yes, you know, my day was two hundred, two hundred fifty a month. Nowadays, car payments are you know five hundred to nine hundred dollars a month. Imagine what you can do with that. That's eight to ten thousand dollars a year. Uh, you can travel, uh, you know, you can see places, you can learn things, and instead you're anchored or shackled by, you know, this brand new, uh, you know, Toyota that you have or brand new, uh, a nice truck. Uh, it's always, uh, to me, it has been let your properties buy your toys later. Uh, but if you buy the toys now, you're never going to turn it around and be able to to get uh, uh, the real estate that is what's going to give you the passive income well, in the future. Back, back to status quo, because there's that stigma of you know what are my friends going to think, but who cares? You know, long term investing, long term planning. You're probably going to have a lot more wealth if you do it this way. If you sacrifice for a few years. Yeah, and if if you look at. Uh, uh, Millionaires and the car, the cars they drive. You'd think it'd, it'd be you know Ferraris and Bentleys and <laughs> Lamborghinis. Most of them are driving you know a Prius yeah. or, or a Honda. And uh, you know nothing wrong with with having nice things, but have the patience to uh, let those things be paid for themselves by your investments. Yeah. The glamorization of the social network now is about seeing the the eye candy, uh, but the reality is, is the majority of the millionaires that are out there are the average neighbors that we have right around the corner. That's it. It's amazing. It. <laughs> it's amazing. It's easy to see. And just as a side note, for any of my clients who have, uh, we've had this conversation before, Eric and I have not had any other dialogue. This is him coming from his mouth. So it, your, 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 your talking points and key points have been uh, dead on with what we have been coaching our clients to let them know. That's good to you know, hear. Your strategy yeah. is, you know, if you, if you want to put your future retirement as well as your security in, in the forefront, that would be the smartest move for you to be able to do. Yeah. So thank you for that, for that uh, insight and that advice. How has that translated for you? In, well, uh, uh, great question. Uh, when uh, we were able to, uh, as soon as we got back to, to Las Vegas and I started working, uh, we did exactly that. Bought a, a, a triplex, uh, and we've owned uh, other units, uh, and we started kind of building our, our portfolio. Uh, and little by little, uh, it started to, to grow. Uh, the maximum we were at, I think, was 22 properties, uh, and we did that uh, during one of the, the crises when everybody was just selling and prices were dropping. We were able to to build our, our portfolio, and uh, that is what helped us build the, the law firm. Uh, as I was trying to grow this, then we'd say, you know what, let's sell this property, let's sell that property, we built it equity. So it, it's, there's no greater feeling when you, but back then, you know, you would buy a property for 125,000, uh, two or three years later, it would be at 175. Mm -hmm. So it's $50,000 without doing much, but just making mm -hmm. sure it was rented and making sure it was kept up. Yeah. Uh, and if you multiply that by eight or 10 properties, uh, you, you can see what, what that does. So, uh, and then, you know, as we progressed, we uh, decided to get into some uh, commercial buildings. So we got rid of the, the residential and <laughs> moved into to commercial. But uh, every investor has to pick where they're comfortable uh, at right. and what kind of tenants they want to deal with. So you talk to some people and they're petrified of commercial leases and, and dealing with commercial tenants. You talk to others and they say, I could never deal with an apartment building, right. it, it's yeah. such a headache. So it just depends where you're comfortable and, and, and what uh, you like and, and what you can do well at. So we've been fortunate to try different things and, and know what works. Uh, so we've actually 
downsize in, in the number of properties we've had, uh, but I think it improved in, in the quality of, of buildings and, and tenants that, that we have. Uh, and it's not overnight. It's taken us, you know, I'm 50 years old, so started about 25 uh, years ago, so it, it takes some time. But uh, it's great to know that at my age, if, if everything closed down and fell apart, we'd be okay. So uh, that's a nice position to, to be in, is, is when you can let your, your investments and, and your portfolio kind of uh, dictate uh, your, your retirement plan or your, or your exit plan. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, on the point of being able to, to uh, deal with tenants, right? Or uh, when you bought your first triplex, did you actually have to move into that, or and and did you deal with those tenants, or do you use a management company? At that point? Uh, we we didn't have to move into it. Uh, we uh, we bought it as an investment. And for me, tenants have always uh, it's always been uh, easy for me to deal with them. And that's because uh, I'm pretty easy going. Uh, a lot of landlords will really nickel and dime tenants and, and the maintenance of the property and they'll stress out over everything. I'm more of a, if you treat people in a nice way, they're gonna hopefully uh, reciprocate. So if my tenant was ever, you know, hey, I'm gonna pay you on the 12th instead of, of the 5th, is that fine? Sure, that's okay. Uh, hey, this needs to be repaired or, or uh, I'm having this issue, we'll get out there, we'll, we'll take care of it. So, uh, you know, a lot, there's some people that will abuse that and, and try to get away with it uh, if you let them. But for the most part, uh, people are, are nice. And if people have ever rented from a, a huge complex and a corporate uh, landlord, then they're very happy to come to a small landlord and realize, okay, I'm not going to have to pay 50 bucks on the 6th because I'm late and then 75 on the 7th and, and all that. So uh, they, they appreciate and, and they'll work with you. And, and so in that respect, it, it's been nice. Uh, we've had uh, better results with single family homes as far as getting better quality renters and, and renters that stay for a longer period of time. Apartments, there seems to be a little bit more of a turnover, but again, the, to me, a, a fourplex is still the first, uh, best first property to buy, yeah. uh, just for appreciation and also the the income. The income so, yeah, and that's one of the the key points we help uh, our clients understand is that uh, when you go and qualify for a single family residence, based off of your current income, you're capped at a certain number based off of your monthly. But when you shop for a fourplex, now those leases that exist already now count as income, which means your qualification yeah. is now greater. And so uh, when you count those incomes uh, and you see how much you're actually paying for the, for the building, okay, you're, you're now only paying seven, eight, nine hundred dollars That's it. <laughs> Better than yeah. fifteen, two thousand. Yeah. And, and you still get folks that are like, let me buy my house first and then I'll buy the fourplex. Right. I'm like, okay, well if you buy the fourplex first, you're going in with you know less than ten thousand down uh, right. normally. If you want to buy your fourplex as an investment property later, now you need forty to seventy thousand dollars. percent down. And how hard is it to save that amount? Yeah. So. Uh, and are you going to be willing to step down if you have to use it as your next residence? That's it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So take the right steps. It's <laughs> It's always important, and uh, I think for for all of us when we uh, talk to someone or help them get into a property. To see them ten years later, and they run into you at the supermarket or, or uh, at a meeting, and you just as soon as they see you, you see the smile from ear to ear, yeah. and they run up to you like, "I did what you told me, and look where I am now, or look what it's helped me uh, accomplish." So that's always the best feeling as as a realtor or as a professional is when someone follows your advice, and then you see them a few years later, they're just so happy and, and so much better off for for having listened. Yeah, that's fantastic, man. <laughs> Well, as far as uh, your, your empire that you've built, uh, seeing the human aspect of that behind it is, is really powerful, at least for me. Because <laughs> it, it, gives you, uh, it gives you hope in the sense that, you know, in spite of the world that we kind of are dealing with right now, there's a lot of good people out there, so. You know, and we see that every day. Uh, it's easy to focus on the negativity, but uh, if you look for, for the, the nice uh, folks out there and, and, and those that are trying to do good and help, uh, there, there's a lot of, uh, of folks out there, so yes, sir. it's always nice to focus on that. Mm -hmm. Awesome, man. 
So as far as getting started, uh, today in, um, in our current real estate market, we have super thin inventory, uh, but we have phenomenal rates. And when it comes to purchasing that first property, um, a lot of folks are dealing with shortage of, of cash, maybe capital to be able to get into one. Um, the, we, we encourage them to use down payment assistance programs mm -hmm. that are out there uh, because uh, that allows them to be able to qualify for the low down payment and even have some of those costs yeah. offset and go from there. Uh, what would be your, your timeline? So if someone were to take that, that strategy, purchase a fourplex uh, and move on to the next one, what would be a good kind of indicator for someone to say, okay, it's time to move on to the next property? Well, normally um, within two years, uh, I think, uh, and the, the good news is that if uh, you, you buy the fourplex first, it's easy to explain to a bank, I have the apartment or I'm no longer comfortable there, I need to buy my, my house. So you don't have to get uh, a 10 or 20 percent down investor loan when you're moving because you're still going to be a primary occupant of the new property. So you can still get uh, a house with uh, low down. And right now, like you mentioned, the, the assistance programs are incredible. The interest rates are unbelievable. Uh, I don't think a lot of you out there will remember this, but my parents, the first house we bought here in 1979 was at over 18% interest. Lord. And, and they were happy to buy a house. Yes. Uh, most of the time I've been in real estate, interest has been you know, well below 10, uh, usually around seven to 8%. But anything below 8% is great, in my opinion. Uh, when you get below 4%, it's free money. Mm -hmm. uh, so it allows you to, to purchase uh, so much more property or have such, so much more of a low monthly payment if you choose to, to stay small. Uh, in, in your property, so it really opens up the the doors to home ownership. So there's nothing worse uh, than than to realize had I bought in 2020, I would have had three percent interest. Here we are, 2022, 2023, and I'm at seven or eight. Right. Uh, it's not going to stay where it is forever. So uh, I think uh, if you can tell your friends, yeah, I bought a fourplex at three percent interest with three thousand, four thousand down. Uh, it's an insane gonna be, deal. <laughs> yeah. insane. <laughs> that's, win that's winning in Vegas yeah. for sure. But it's possible. Yeah. And it's possible and, and it's, uh, people are doing it. As far as the, the slim inventory, uh, that does make it a little bit uh, more difficult uh, and a lot more work for the agents. But uh, it, it's funny, when, when I sold real estate, uh, I, I dealt mostly with Hispanics and, and does, being Hispanics, you always want to have a deal. So you always want to offer, even if you're getting it for half price, Great. you still have to offer a little less. <laughs> so uh, I would have clients and you know we would find a house and, and it, it was perfect. And say the price was 150000 I'm dating myself. They would say, oh man, we like it, we like it. Can we offer 120 And I'd say, well, this isn't like buying furniture or buying a car, most properties are priced fairly close to where they should sell. So you'd have to educate the consumer on that, that you know you need to, to realize that that's the price of the house. The second way I, I would convince them to make their best possible offer is, I would say, look, we looked at six houses today. Which one did you like the best? Well, the one we're gonna make an offer on. Great. The other 20 people that are looking for houses in this neighborhood in your price range, which house do you think they're going to like the best? Well, probably the same house because it has, you know, it was just remodeled, it has the best amenities, you know, uh, the position in the, in the block, in the neighborhood. So I said, well, do you want to offer 120 and risk somebody else coming in and buying it for 145 or, or, or this price? Then we're going to have to go buy you the other house, the, the second choice. Oh, no, I didn't like that one as much. I'm like, well, let's make your best offer. And I'd always say, you know, for each thousand dollars, it's going to cost you seven dollars a month. Mm -hmm. So if you want to offer 140, let's just offer the, the 150. It's a, it's a good price. That's going to be, you know, 70 dollars more. So I'll pay the first month. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's a lot of 
the hard work of, of being a realtor is is knowing how to to help them. explain right. to the client, educate them. A lot of times, you know, they don't realize they're they're uh, they're uh, shooting themselves in the foot. So you need realistic expectations mm -hmm. and, and guide them through the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's that's the beautiful thing about this business is being able to help folks do go through that process. It's an experience. Yeah. And for those who've never done it before, they're learning as they go too. So um, part of that conversation we have with them is uh, being able to understand where are we at in the market right now? Like, what does that look like from a historical perspective? You know, 18%, it's been there. <laughs> and we could very well go back to that someday. Yeah, but, yeah it's not gonna stay where it is forever. <laughs> yeah, your affordability right now is fantastic. And that's the other thing about Vegas is that, and that, that, you, uh, that you highlighted earlier is our affordability in Vegas is phenomenal. When you compare us to our neighbors of California and Arizona, yeah. uh, you know, the, the two kind of biggest other populations that are out there, not only do we have a better cost of living, better quality of life, uh, but also uh, uh, a lower price point to start it. You know? yeah. and, uh, don't get started on taxes. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Yeah, so that's why we see the California exodus happening right now. So. Lots of uh, lots of opportunity. That also explains why we have such a strong buyer demand today. Uh, you know, yeah, I think that's going to insulate uh, Vegas for the next few years, and when we see the rest of, of the country maybe going in a, in a big slump, uh, you just see the traffic of people coming in from California, yep. and we're, prices are still going going up, which to me is incredible. Yeah. Right in the middle of a, of a huge crisis, a world pandemic, yeah. and, and you can't find a listing. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can't find a home. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good problem to have here in the city. I, I agree with you 100. percent That that is going to give us uh, some you know trajectory of positive stability here in the city uh, as far as home prices go. So uh, for those who are on the fence about thinking about buying maybe their first house, uh, being able to, to you know invest in real estate, uh, take it from the expert. I mean, you, you, you've heard our conversation and our dialogue. His talking points. Are exactly dead on with what we're saying. And no, and I love that we we just said hello and turned on the cameras. We didn't have any type of, of uh, right. this is what right. we're going to talk about and this is what right. we're going to go into, and and we're just spot on as far as agreeing with with uh, the way to to invest and the, the importance of it and, and the how to. So that's yeah. great. Well, <laughs> grateful for your time, sir. And thank, thank you guys for coming. Yeah. Really enjoyed. I've known Isaac for for a number of years, and so happy to see him uh, doing real estate and and uh, enjoying such success. So uh, if anybody wants to buy a house, we've got a great team right here. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Coming from a Palacios <laughs> Realty. Appreciate that. So to, to wrap it up, Eric, um, any advice for young, maybe entrepreneurs or anybody who's, you know, young looking to invest? Any, Go, any, going into the bonus yeah, section. Yeah, like little bonus yeah, section. Uh, yeah. Leave the shiny rims for your 30s. Uh, <laughs> that's the best advice I can, I can give. Uh, and you know, growing up here in Vegas, I, I think the, the bling bling uh, of the city. Most of my friends graduated high school and immediately went out and bought themselves a brand new car uh, off the lot. And then for the next four or five years, Stuck. they were slaves to the car because you think, well, I can handle a five hundred dollar payment, but then you don't think about the two hundred and fifty insurance and the two hundred a month in gas. <laughs> so uh, it turns to the point where you've got a beautiful car and you can't take your girlfriend to the movies. So uh, my advice is always don't get in debt. Uh, it's important to establish credit, get a credit card, use it, pay it off, but be smart. Live within your means and buy a little car for two, three, four thousand cash, whatever cash you have. It'll last. Cars are built in a way now that you know you can have a 30 year old Toyota and it's still going strong. So. Uh, Save your money. Just live within your means. Don't go out and, and, and buy an eighty thousand uh, dollar Escalade or, or Raptor when you're twenty two <laughs> years old. Uh, you'll have time to get those things if that's what you want. Uh, just focus on on investing on a property, and then by the time you're thirty, your fourplex can pay for your Escalade or your Raptor or whatever toys <laughs> you want, and it's not coming out of pocket. So that's the biggest thing. If I could you know get through to a young couple or a young person is uh, everybody that you see with the fancy cars and the nice things they're up to here uh, in, in debt mm -hmm. and that's not where you want to be you become a slave to your possessions and that makes you 
a slave to your job. Uh, you, it's impossible to leave uh, a, a, an unhappy work situation if you've got all the pressure of bills and everything else. And add a family to it and yeah. you're done. Right. <laughs> so be smart in your 20s and, and that can set you up for the rest of your life. And so let, let's kind of carry that conversation a little further, right? That if there is someone who is uh, who has aspirations for business or being an entrepreneur, want to build that wealth, um, the financial advice you've given is, is 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 spot on. But let's say someone has like personal challenges where they want to be able to uh, understand like how do I overcome my fear? Or, you know, how do I like navigate in this world? And I feel like an underdog. Um, you, you probably you know experience there and I'll tell people I, I'm still afraid I, I've been you know an entrepreneur for close to 30 years and every business decision I still get butterflies in my stomach and you always second guess yourself should should we do this should we not should we go this big should we go this small so <clears throat> the fact that you're afraid that you think you're gonna fail you're not sure if you're gonna make it uh, that's good that's a good thing. Uh, I think when you lose the fears, when you start making mistakes, because you you lose your your humbleness, sure. uh, you become arrogant, and and you know, <laughs> arrogance is the first step to downfall. Right. So uh, it's okay to have fear. It's okay to think maybe it's not going to work. Uh, my advice is always talk to somebody that's been there. Talk to somebody that's gone through it. Talk to somebody that's that's made it. Uh, talk to somebody that has failed and gotten back up and uh, when I meet people I've, I've had a lot of people tell me man you've got the Midas touch everything you do just works and I say well that's because you've seen the 10 things that I've done that have worked you didn't see the 90 that didn't work uh, it all it, it hasn't all been success uh, I think I've failed at more things that I've been uh, successful at but if you keep trying if you keep going that's what's going to determine it if you're going to make it and uh, don't be afraid to, to fail uh, the, the law was my, my third <laughs> career um, so it's okay to try something you know what this isn't for me let me see what else I'm going to do uh, and entrepreneur uh, that spirit to me is, is, is the best uh, thing a person can have because you get to, to dictate uh, your, your steps in life and, and not just financially, but how are you going to spend your time? And I tell people jokingly that I wanted to be my own boss because I wanted to work half days. And it's true, I work 12 hour days. <laughs> <laughs> so I am working half days. Yeah. But uh, you specific enough. <laughs> yeah. Careful what you ask for. I missed that one. But uh, it's true, most entrepreneurs work more than eight hours a day. Uh, and if you're not working, you're at least thinking about uh, your job. Uh, all my, my attorneys, my employees, you know, 5 p.m. they punch out and, and they can relax. Yeah. Uh, being an entrepreneur means you're, you're thinking about your business the, the, the 24 hours a day. So it does take a little bit of stress, but uh, the freedoms that come with it and the rewards, uh, I think, are great. Absolutely. Absolutely agree. Eric, thank you so much for your time, man. And thank you guys for coming. It's been great. Thank it's you. It's been a lot of fun. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, that's it. All right. Well, that does it for this special on-site and live episode of the Uranium Algonius 5 Diamond Group podcast and our special guest in his office, the legend himself, Mr. Eric Palacios. <laughs> Thank you again. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit the subscribe button down below. Uh, drop in your comments. If you have specific questions for Eric, we'll have his contact information and websites available below, the social media outlets. And uh, you can absolutely drop your comments, remarks, or even questions. You can reach us on, on all of the social outlets, uh, any channel that you find, you'll find us there under the Five Diamond Group. My name is Jared. My name is Isaac. And that does it for this episode. Make it a great one.